The ArrayList class is a powerful tool inside of Java's collection framework. And one of the most powerful parts of the tool are the methods of the ArrayList class. So that's what we're going to look at in this video, methods of the ArrayList class. So what I've done is I've created a class called ArrayList 101, and I've created an ArrayList inside of it. But there is a problem. Hopefully you can notice it. If I tried to run this, there would be an error. And that is because I did not import ArrayList. It's important to import the ArrayList class from the util package. So the first method that I want to look at is called add. And what it does is it adds elements, of course, to an ArrayList. It adds them to the end of the ArrayList. So you'll see that four was added first. The end is actually the beginning. Five is then added. And it's added to the end, which is the first index or the one index. And you'll notice that it's taking in E value. And you say, well, what is this E? Don't worry about it too much. It just stands for element. And element just means the data type that the array list is. So if it's integer, it's going to be integer. If it's double, it's going to be double. Whatever object the array list contains, that's what that E is going to represent. So let's add one more value to our array list. So now we have numlist.add6. So now we have four, five, six in our array list. So now that we've added values to the array list, what would be the logical next thing to do? Well, let's see what's inside of them rather than this visual representation. So the second method that we're going to look at is called the get method. We're going to get the value in the zeroth index. So we say the value in index zero is numlist.get0. Notice you get the value not by searching for the value itself. You're not searching for 4. You're searching for the index. So you say 0, and it pulls whatever is in that index out. And the value in index 0 is 4. If we were to call this again, but this time put a 1 in there, looking at the 1 index, we would get a 5. And finally, in the 2 index, we would get a 6. So those are the methods add and get. This example is very similar to the last example. In fact, it has the exact same starting code. We create an array list called numList, then we add three values, four, five, and six. And so the method that I want to show in this example is also called add, but there's a slight difference. You can see that this add method is overloaded because instead of just having one parameter, it has two parameters. And the first parameter is the index, where you want to add the element, and the second parameter is the value. That's the value that's going to be inserted into the array list. So what this program is going to do is it's going to take the 9, insert it at the 1 index. Unfortunately, the 5 is already there. So the 5 and 6 already inside of the array list are going to have to be shifted over. And then that 9 can be inserted. So now the array list, instead of being 4, 5, 6, is 4, 9, 5, 6. If we were to do this again, except for this time, you can see that we're going to insert at the third index. And the value that we're going to insert is 8. The 8 element is there. 6 is going to have to be shifted over. The 8 comes in. And now the array list reads 4, 9, 5, 8, 6. And if we wanted to, we could still use the other add method, which is just going to add at the end of the array list. And so this would add 7 to the end of the array list. So now if we were to get the values inside of the array list using the get method, it would be 4, 9, 5, 8, 6, and 7. So there are two add methods inside of the ArrayList class. The first one inserts at the end. The second one allows you to pick an insertion point and then adds the value into the ArrayList. This next example starts much the same way as the last two did in that we're starting with an ArrayList called numList and we're adding the values 4, 5, and 6 to them. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to show, hey, the values 4, 5, and 6 are really in there. So we use the get method in order to accomplish that goal. Now the method that I want to show you in this example or highlight in this example is the set method. The set method is kind of like the overloaded add method, except for it's not going to insert the value. It's actually just going to take one element out and change it into what the new element is. So in this case, the first parameter is the index. So we're going to change the 4 into a 1. So the 0th index should become 1 instead of 4. And that's exactly what happens. Now if we wanted to change the other two values inside of the array list, we can say set 1, 2. The first index becomes the element 2. 
And now to set the last value, we're going to change the six into a three. So the set method is going to replace the values inside of the array list. And then to show that they have been replaced, we can use the get method and show now the array list has one, two, and three inside of it instead of four, five, and six. This example starts much as the other ones did. We create an array list, add the values four, five, and six to them. We're going to show that four, five, and six are inside of the array. And now what we want to showcase is the method remove. And the method remove only has one parameter. It is going to be the index of the element that is going to be removed. So we're looking, in this case, at the zeroth index. What is at the zeroth index? The element four. And so we're going to remove that element. So it removes the element, but it doesn't just stop there. It's actually going to resize the array list. Five gets moved over into the zero spot, and the six gets moved into index one. And we could show this using the print line method and then the uh, get method, which shows that five is at index zero, and it also shows that six is at index one once the zeroth value was removed, that four was removed. Let's do this one more time. So if I want to remove what is at index one, which should be element six, it's going to remove that element. And then if we were to print the array list, the only value that would be inside of there would be the five. So remove removes an element at a specified index. We have a setup that we've seen before, num list with the values four, five, and six added to it. And then in this example, what I'd like to show you is the method size. And what size does is it returns the number of elements in this array list. So the output would be the number of elements in the array list is three. It doesn't have any parameters, just simply returns the number of elements. Now, if I wanted to remove an element, just like we did in the last example, I could go ahead and do that. And then if I was to print out the size of the array, instead of saying three, it would say two. Now, if you're keeping track of common data structures and ways to know the number of elements inside of them, ArrayList uses the method size, Array uses the field length, and String uses the method length. It's not confusing at all, not hard to remember. Maybe someone could have said, hey, why don't we use the same thing, but eh, that'd be too easy. That's going to conclude the first part of our ArrayList methods video. Please do check out the second ArrayList methods video. It's going to cover more methods of the ArrayList class. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.